Hello everybody, good afternoon, good morning or good evening depending where you live. Um, my name is Nico and I'm going to be your host for uh, the next hour. Uh, I work at uh, Golem as a product manager and at the same time uh, there's also Alex from Golem which will be moderating the chat box so at any time during that live session feel free to uh, post your questions into the chat box and uh, after that live session which will last uh, probably around 30 minutes we'll also handle a Q&A session right after so uh, please post your questions anytime and uh, we'll take some time at the end uh, to answer those. Uh, just uh, for more people to join, uh, let me remind you that uh, so we're gonna have a live tonight. It's gonna be about uh, traffic, and uh, we're also gonna have a live in two days on Thursday, uh, which will be about flocking. So we're gonna play with a B and B hive uh, and do some 3D nav navigation of uh, flying uh, creatures. Next week, uh, we'll take, uh, I guess we're gonna make some live sessions, which should be on Thursday and Friday, not really sure about that. And uh, we'll start a new, completely new session about battle simulation. Uh, so check the, the live uh, webpage if you haven't done so. And also feel free to subscribe to the YouTube channel. So let's get started with uh, today's session about traffic. Um, so I'm running Golem 731, but uh, whatever version of uh, uh, 7 version you, you're running shouldn't make any difference. And uh, today, as you may have guessed here, I'm gonna populate my environment with a couple of cars. And if I got some time at the end, I'll probably also try to make some pedestrian and show you really quickly uh, how you can maybe make them react together. Uh, it's it's a long process, like right now, if I wanted to do it, uh, and uh, kind of really manual, and uh, be sure that we're gonna work on that in future releases, but uh, I can show you what's the current for workflow maybe. So uh, let me check what we've done so far into that scene. So I made um, two entity types uh, one which is the man uh, character type uh, which I loaded so it's gonna be the first one it's gonna be green and I also loaded uh, one of the character we having within the character pack which is called casual car maybe let's jump uh, into that uh, casual car uh, first uh, so we can see how I are rig it uh, so here well maybe let me show you uh, actually the 3d the free character within Maya uh, which is going to be here. So that's my um, that's my car. Uh, well, this is the asset which is included into the character pack and let's show some bones. So here we go. So you may notice that uh, here I'm having, a, so I'm having a root bone which is mandatory obviously and I'm having a bone which is going on the front and um, for each wheel I'm having two bones, one which will, well it's those are going to be used if you want to steer the car and procedurally animate uh, the car. Um, so that bone here will be uh, able to control the steering direction, uh, does the 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 wheeling uh, wheeling circle. I'm not sure what's the word for that, but uh, that device you're using to uh, set the direction of your car. Um, uh, so do you ask the car to go on the left or on the right? So this is what's going to drive the left or right like this. And uh, also I'm having another bone here, which is gonna be driving um, the orientation and um, the, the role of the actual wheel. Those bones are, and the way it's rigged, it's not really mandatory, but um, I wanted to have a car which will, that people will be able to steer and control completely if they wanted to. So this is why I, I rigged it that way. Also, I knew that I wanted to make some physics uh, with that character that I may want to have some uh, explosion and uh, maybe the wheel will have to be detached and uh, broken from the car. So the only way to, um, to get that is to um, actually make a separate bone um, for that uh, specific mesh here. So yeah, um, short word here, uh, everything you want to animate, you need to uh, map it somehow. Everything you need to uh, control with physics, you need to map it somehow as well. And uh, that character, well, not really interesting here into geometry, but it has just a couple of uh, variation, uh, which is either it's gonna be a, a regular car or it's gonna be a taxi car. So I'm having just a couple of uh, extra meshes at the top here, for example, which are just saying that 
uh, that car is going to be a taxi. But whatever. Um, okay, and uh, yeah, you can see I set up the physics here uh, because maybe I wanted to detach some objects or make some collisions and uh, and have other characters to react to that. So I just make a, a convex L approximation of the character with just cylinders for the wheels and the box uh, for the car. Let's see if we got some time at the end to tackle that. Uh, but uh, just uh, in the meantime, we'll mostly speak about uh, traffic. So. Just a quick word about the traffic behaviors here. Um, if you've been following the previous session, you figured that it will be really similar to what we've been doing so far. So we've been using, you know, the go to behavior to send characters somewhere. Um, we've been using the navigation behavior to steer the characters and make them make them avoid each other. So here it's going to be probably the same workflow. Uh, you can see at the end of your behaviors, you're having one behavior which is called uh, traffic. And here that guy is the equivalent of the navigation behavior. That's the one which is, will handle what's the speed of the character, how you avoid and how you, you dodge uh, other cars. And we also having a traffic go to in which you'll be able to set up what's going to be the target for the characters, but respecting um, your traffic environment. So let's speak about that traffic environment. So environments are, you know, within Golem, you can have multiple environments. We spoke in previous sessions about the physics environment. So when you need to make some physics explosion, uh, you have a node into your scene, which will handle um, all the global attributes related to physics. So it can be, you know, the gravity, how many iterations you would like to do with the physics sim simulation and so on and so far. We obviously have a terrain environment. So that terrain environment is dedicated for biped characters. So how they adapt to the terrain, uh, how does that terrain look like, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, on Thursday, we're going to speak about a flock uh, environment. And today we're going to speak about the traffic environment. So you have just to keep in mind that those are different words uh, in which entities can move and that word has its own rule. So cars don't move the same way than characters. So that's why they have a specific word for that. So the way you create that environment, so we, it's not really casual for people to do traffic. Um, so it's not really uh, in the shelf that you can create that traffic environment. So you need to go into the Golem uh, menu here and you can figure that there's an environment locators and you can see here all the environment which are available. And by the way, yes, there's also one which is called the perception environment. So this is where entity can perceive each other. Uh, and we've been playing with that one if you were attending a session last week about uh, the virus uh, spread uh, demo scene we made. So this is where we were defining how the characters uh, perceive each other. So you can see here, there's one environment called the traffic locator and one environment called the traffic crossing locator. So in my scene here, maybe also let me uh, debug this uh, quickly. I made, um, so I'm not really an artist, so I made it like quick and dirty. Uh, so I just make a lot of curves, they're not even touching each other's. And uh, I also made sure that anytime I add an intersection, my curves stop. So uh, I had to make sure that I was not making a curve which was that long and crossing another one, else we will not be able to detect uh, crossings. So here I just, uh, you know, um, uh, approximate my roads with curves, so just segments, sub-segments for every time I'm having a curve within, uh, without an intersection. So that's really important here. You want to make sure that uh, you're not making curves which are uh, intersecting each other without uh, finishing each other. So I'm having a couple of curves here, and this is what's going to define my road network. So um, I'll set, um, I set right after how many lanes, but here is just, you know, the guidelines of how does my traffic system will look like. So the idea is you select directly your curves. So don't select the transform, di directly select the curve nodes and go into the golem menu, into environment locator, and you want to uh, create a traffic locator. And uh, you can see you already have some stuff going on within your scene. And if we check now, we're having that uh, GLM environments group uh, that we're now used to. And within that GLM environment group, there is actually something, a node called the traffic locator. So let's take a look into the attribute editor. So it's uh, saying that now that traffic locator is connected to those different curves. Uh, this is where you're going to set all the global um, attributes uh, for your characters. So this is where you say um, on which side of the road uh, characters will drive. 
do you enable lane switch? So if you uh, set multiple lanes per road, um, do you allow characters to change uh, lane? And if yes, how long does it take to switch lanes? Uh, then you got something called the default roads attribute. So that's um, like the white of the lane, uh, the separation. So separation is going to be, you know, the separation between uh, the forward and backward lane. Uh, the lane white is going to be, you know, the what just the white of the road. And um, those you can see here as are going to be global. So it means that if you change them here, they're going to be changed for each curve or each segment you're having. So you can also specify how many forward lane you're having, uh, how many backward uh, lane you're having as well. So those are going to be shared uh, by uh, our characters. What's the speed limit on each road? You also have something called the crossing attributes and we'll um, quickly go into that right after. So just a quick word about first the default road attributes. So here, let's say you want that segment here to have some different attributes than the rest. So here we've seen that if we change that, it's going to change it globally. So what's the way to control that specific curve here? So let me figure which one it is. Um, whenever you, you assign a curve to a traffic system, so let's say it's going to be that one here. There we go. Um, and whatever is going to be attached to a traffic locator, actually within Golem, we're going to add within the extra attributes uh, some attributes which will uh, control for that segment how the, um, the system looks like. So you can see here by default it's uh, yellow, which within Maya means that it's connected to the locator, uh, so uh, the actual default locator attributes. And uh, if you're not happy with that, you can just, you know, break the connection here and say, you know what, I'm going to have like a two, uh, I'm going to have a two lane uh, backward segment. So that's going to be the contrary I want to do actually. Uh, that's going to be that one here. So I want to have a two lane uh, segment here. And uh, now you have your two lanes appearing and without uh, changing the rest of the environment. And uh, you can do that at any moment. And this is also where you'll be able to change, you know, the speed limits on each segment if you want to have different speeds uh, for each part of your road. Okay, um, so what about the crossings? Uh, you may notice that here my road are intersecting with each other. So you want to actually uh, create those traffic locators we've been, um, traffic crossing locators we've been uh, speaking about. So usually, well, there's a menu entry, but nobody used it uh, because the way you usually create your uh, crossings is through the traffic locator. So you're going to define um, uh, here what's the, wait a minute, what's the timing scale? No, that's not exactly what you need. Uh, crossing samples count, speed ratio. Okay, so whatever. Here we are having that com that button here, which is called auto compute crossings, and um, that guy will take the curves which have been entered, and will figure based on the distance between um, the end and the beginning position of your curve, it will figure that uh, you may have some crossings here and there, and any time it it figures that there is an intersection, uh, it creates a traffic crossing locator. So now you're seeing that within your system, you're having those orange round uh, with some uh, red um, stripes next to it. So every time you're having a road, you're having uh, that red stripe in those define um, the traffic lights. So let me show you where they are. So now you can see that my traffic environment here has a plus next to it. And if I expand it, I can see my different traffic crossing systems. And those are nodes as well in which I'll be able to um, set up what's the size of my crossing. So what's the radius of my crossing? Um, is it a junction? So junction mean that um, here um, the traffic light system is not required because there's just two roads connecting to each other. If you don't cross it here, we'll use the uh, traffic light system. So here it's actually a junction. And uh, if that wasn't, if it wasn't, uh, let's say that one here is not going to be, you know, a junction, uh, that guy here. Um, so here it's going to be a completely traffic light control system you'll be able to set up either that the lights are going to be automatic. So if you're uh, specifying that the lights are automatic, you're going to control those parameters. So what's the time for the green light? What's the time for the orange light and the red lights? And all those you know, different lights for different lanes will be driven automatically by the system for you. And uh, if you're not happy with this, you can also keyframe those. So each entry here, each curve, so you're having four curves converging to that crossing locator. Um, well, they're not really well named, but if they were well named, we could retrieve which one was which. And here you could just say, okay, zero uh, means it's going to be red. So you can keyframe that value 
um, one is going to be green and whatever which is in between zero and one will be orange. So let's say you want to s specifically control what's going on on the traffic light, maybe make some, uh, um, you know, a traffic uh, uh, jam somewhere. Uh, maybe you can just uh, push and um, oblige a traffic light to be red, for example. And uh, just a quick word about that final um, that final attribute here. Uh, it's called the output light timing. So here in in that attribute, we're gonna push for each curve once again. So we're having our four curves here uh, converging to that traffic crossing. And for every curve, we're gonna specify what's the current value out of it. So we're gonna write out the the current value. So either um, it can be automatic or it can be manual. Whatever happens at any time, we're going to write this. So what's the point of writing the value out? Um, it means that here we'll be able to use those data to probably control my pedestrian. Let's say I want my pedestrian to be able to cross only when this is red. I need to have a way to extract that information that that road here is red. So I just have to figure which one of my curve I'm interested in and just say, OK, I just want to use that parameter as my attribute for my trigger. So I just want to cross my road only if this attribute is going to be zero. Okay, so that was kind of it for uh, my uh, different systems and my different crossing locators. So here, let me turn off, uh, let me turn in junctions uh, for the corners because that's not an actual traffic light control system here. So I'm going to grab those. Uh, that guy here is a junction and I uh, already changed that one, right? Uh, yeah, yes. Okay. Um, just a quick word about uh, radius as well. Uh, radius means that uh, this is um, how sharp your turn will be taken by uh, your character. So um, it really depends on your topology of your of your environment here. So really have to to uh, figure that out. And uh, also, yeah, you can specify if you want to uh, forbidden U-turns. So um, if it's uh, checked, it means that characters will not be able on the traffic light to, you know, go from that lane to that lane uh, if they reach if they need to reach a specific location. Okay. So uh, what's next? We've been defining our traffic uh, environment, so now we need to populate uh, our characters. So the way characters can be populated, as always, uh, stands within the population tool. And if I open it, as always, I'm having plenty of options, but there's one I haven't really spoke about, uh, which is curve population. Obviously here, um, you'd like to populate your cars only near the traffic system. So sure, you could create some meshes, some zones here, uh, but you know, here my environment is just uh, a plane which is below everything. So I don't have a specific way to just extract uh, that road network. Uh, and uh, also how do I control um, you know, the density of, uh, of my characters. So what I can do is uh, select my different curves here and say that I want to populate only the car character. So I'm just going to uncheck this. And let's say if you don't uncheck that, you'll be able afterwards within the population tool to uh, change uh, your uh, weighting system. So uh, I'm going to say, okay, this is going to be only my car I want to populate and I want to populate on curves. So as soon as I press that button here, it can detect. So if uh, I hadn't have any uh, traffic system, my characters will be populating directly uh, on the curve themselves. Uh, and uh, if uh, you're having a traffic system, you can see here it's uh, following the actual system. So my two lanes there, um, they are actually uh, mapped with a population tool within it. And you can afterward control, you know, all the uh, casual data such as what's the radius of so the radius of the car is, you know, a bit bigger uh, than a regular character. What's going to be the distance between my characters? So that's probably going to be something like this. How many of those I want to have? So here you can see my network is uh, densely populated. So obviously I don't want to have uh, so many cars else. It will be jammed all the way. Uh, so yeah, let's say 38. Let's start like this with 38 cars. And uh, let's uh, probably oh, increase the distance a bit. I can see some characters are quite close to each other. Here we go. So yeah, still 38. All good. And uh, when I'm happy with that, same uh, mechanism that always same workflow like always I'm just create my, my crowd. So create my particle system, create my, my crowd field. So it's no different with regular characters. And when I press play, now I'm having cars instead of characters uh, where the positions are. 
and you can see they're already oriented properly on the lane they're at. Uh, so it's most convenient. You don't have to, you know, run the simulation for thousands of well, hundreds of frames to get a pre-roll. Um, here, right away, you can also uh, almost have uh, something which is proper. So there's no much uh, uh, shade variation of my character, mostly shading variation. They all always have the same shape. Uh, but as I said earlier, uh, also I define a rendering type, which is a taxi. So by default, it's not assigned. So let me assign that taxi and say that 10% of my characters will be a taxi. So the next time I'm going to run the same. Now I'm having some yellow cars in the middle. So it's a uh, American style uh, taxi, obviously. Okay. So if I run the same, uh, nothing happens because we haven't defined behaviors. So let's take a look at the behaviors. So I'm going to set my behaviors for my car. So I'm opening my car type here. So my um, behavior flow is empty. And uh, as I s uh, said earlier, I can play with uh, two behaviors. So I can play with the traffic behavior. So let's bring that guy here. And uh, you already know, uh, if you've been following the previous session, that that guy is not enough by himself. I need to combine that uh, with the go to. But uh, just a quick word. Uh, so the traffic behavior, this is where you're going to define what's going to be your steering strategy. So uh, how fast the character is going to move. So you got the speed here. Um, so maximum speed. So that's units uh, uh, per second. So here my characters go at uh, 15 units per second. Uh, probably I'd like to relate that to some kilometers. And uh, keep in mind that uh, also we can take into account the max speed on each segment of the road you've been defining. So if the max speed of the car as uh, a superior to the segment, it will be clamped uh, to that uh, segment uh, speed, obviously. What's the speed when you turn? Uh, what's the maximum acceleration? So how fast you can change your speed? Um, how fast you can turn? Uh, what's the speed ratio mean? So that's um, here you specify what's the maximum speed. And uh, for each character, we're going to pick a random ratio. So between 0, 0.8 and 1.2 and multiply that by 15. So that just gives you random values per uh, character. Uh, same uh, same goes with lateral noise. So uh, here all my characters, they are, you know, directly next to each other. Uh, so they're not shifted on the left or on the right. So they're exactly in the middle of the lane, uh, which is not really organic and not really realistic. If you actually look at traffic simulation, some people are closer to the middle of the lane. Some people are uh, further. So this is where you define your uh, randomness here. And what's the safety distance? So safety distance is what's the distance between your two cars when you're going to drive uh, between those. And by the way, I can notice that there is some scale variation here. I can see that guy is a bit smaller than that guy. So that's something I don't want to have, obviously. And that scale variation is because, you know, mostly people do characters and characters have scale variation. But when you do cars, uh, they more or less the same, uh, at least within the same uh, model size. So yeah, here we go. I just fixed the scale. So one and one means that uh, I won't have any variation there. Okay. And um, here we go. So we're having our traffic um, uh, system here. So what's the speed of the characters? And obviously then I want to add a go to behavior to specify where I want my characters to go. So I'm gonna once again, put that into the same position. So if I drag and drop it, create a parallel operator. So that means my two behaviors will run at the same time and I'm done. So, well, just before uh, throwing the sim, uh, let's uh, figure what it's going to be doing. So it's a traffic go to by default. It has a random target within the environment. So that's always the same, uh, always the same system here than the, the casual entity go to. And if I actually run my sim, fortunately, something should be running properly. Oh, yeah. Sorry about that. Um, True. OK, that's an error uh, we've been fixing uh, for the next release, but uh, I forget it's here. So, OK, um, just uh, if you if you're running 731, you as well and you want to reproduce this, uh, let me uh, let me unbunk that uh, issue. So it's saying the traffic behavior is not running yet. So traffic behavior means um, that guy here. It's not running um, and it tells when calling a traffic go to behavior, consider adding one frame block operator before the go to. So it just means that um, here the traffic behavior should be started just a little bit before that traffic uh, go to because it needs to read data from each other. So that guy needs to be um, um, started 
before that guy here. So in the next version, 7.3.2, which is supposed to be released tomorrow, by the way, um, we fixed that error and uh, we figured a way to go through that. Uh, but if you're having this on your, on your side, it's just a matter of either uh, building your parallel operator in the uh, the opposite way. Here I first dropped the traffic uh, behavior, then the go-to if you had made the contrary. Uh, that would probably fix the error. Or you can just say, uh, do what's advised. So bringing your block operator, so that just blocks the signal for as long as you want to. So you bring it right before the go-to behavior and say you want to block that signal for one frame probably. Uh, yeah. So that's exactly what it's saying, considering adding one frame block operator before the traffic go to behavior. And hopefully that time, that's better. So here we go. So let's um, maybe have a look, and I'm gonna pause here uh, to take a look at what's going on here. So you can see now we having, so here we're having a, a traffic light system. So some red lines here, some green lines here, where we specified that suggestion. Everything is red, so the characters go through uh, directly, we don't have really to care about that. Um, and you can see here it's driven automatically by the system. So now it's saying that that main lane here is going to be green. So the characters go through here, no problem. And uh, the other characters here, they're on a red line. And uh, probably here the shift distance is way too big, so I'm going to decrease that. But when the traffic light turns green, uh, now you can see that. Um, and probably I'll have to change that sample for the orientation. Uh, now you can see that the characters go through, then it turns orange, then red, and here it'll go from red to green and uh, starts again. So just a quick word about uh, that distance here, which gets applied. So uh, um, my believing is that um, it's uh, linked to the radius of the character. So here you can see my radius is quite big. Uh, it's actually bigger than my geometry. So. Uh, I can either maybe change my radius, so that, that will be one way of doing it, or I can change within my uh, character type um, how my entity is represented. So if I click on the character, and uh, if I go into the viewport settings here, I can show uh, what the car box looks like. So my car box is uh, how it's approximated within the simulation. You know, within Golem, uh, if you're having characters, for example, they're approximated with uh, cylinders. If you have in cars, they are approximated with boxes. Um, so we don't use the actual geometry to do collisions and, and steering. So we're using, we're using that simplified version of the geometry. So that's just a box. Uh, so you can actually show with the car box uh, stuff here and you know, the car territory as well. I can show you what's the path of your character, what's the best planning here as well, et cetera, et cetera. So here you can see that guy is planning to turn on the left. Uh, and you can see that that box is way too big. So the way you set it up is by going into your entity type. Uh, within the entity types attributes here, you're having something which is called traffic attribute. So if your character is, is a traffic entity, uh, you'll be able to set up what's its um, box size. So we got a radius to length ratio. So it means that we're going to take the ratio, the sorry, the radius of what we've been set on the population tool, multiply this by six, and that's going to be our length. So here, that's way too big. So I'm going to probably put three uh, because I, I haven't set my radius properly here. That's quite obvious. And uh, my white um, also is uh, a bit too big. So I'm going to probably provide 1.2 or something. And the next time I'm going to throw the sum, and uh, I'm gonna click on the, oh, it's a bit too big still. So let's put something like two. Um, well, maybe a bit, 1.5 then. Okay, so now that's better. Characters will get uh, you know closer to each other now. And you also, well, they even bump into each other. Uh, so this is where you're gonna play with the, you know, the minimal distance I've been uh, mentioning earlier, which is gonna be into your traffic behavior here. So save the distance here. Uh, probably needs to be bigger. So I'm gonna put 1.2, 1.5. So that's gonna be a random uh, range that you're gonna assign to your characters here. And there, here you go. Now you're having a traffic system with characters not bumping into into each other. Some lateral noises, and uh, now everything is proper. So uh, my characters, they're going randomly within the environment. Um, but uh, what if I would like maybe some uh, specific car uh, to follow a specific itinerary? And uh, let's, say, well, let's say we want to make a bus, for example. 
and uh, we want that bus to you know follow a specific road uh, maybe what you can do is uh, set that differently so let me figure uh, maybe a specific entity uh, let's say that guy here so that guy here uh, stay with me for just a minute it's gonna be his ID is gonna be 16001 so that guy here will have a specific itinerary so I'm gonna change the behaviors there for that guy to be um, having a, a specific road so I'm gonna jump into my traffic go to behavior here I'm gonna let the block in the beginning because that's required in the version I'm actually running right now and um, I'm gonna bring a if uh, a if branching here to say that my characters by default uh, they're gonna go randomly but that specific character 16001 I want him to do something specific so I'm gonna bring a new go to behaviors as well I'm gonna bring um, a new uh, output um, a choice out of my if bring it in here and I'm gonna say here my trigger is gonna be the entity ID of my character so I want that specific guy to do something specific so I want to use is ID so I can bring uh, my list of channels if you remember we've been playing with that uh, during the virus spread scene and what I want to inspect is the entity ID and if the value is 16001 uh, I want my characters to go specifically somewhere so specifically somewhere means I want to use probably a target population tool and um, by the way you got all the casual controls you may have on the other go to behavior so uh, you have a PP attributes if you want to you have particle system so you can emit particles and ask the characters to follow uh, that particles um, um, systems uh, you can also write expression but here I'm just gonna drag a, a target pop tool and uh, let's see where that guy starts from he starts from here so um, let's say my first stop is gonna be there, for example. So let's uh, just create a target node using that button here, creates a, a golem specific node. And where I put uh, that guy is really important. So I can put it here if I wanted to. What we'll do is we project uh, the position of um, that guy on the closest lane we're having. So that's gonna probably specify that my target is gonna be here. Uh, but if I put it here, it means that my characters will have to go probably all around that block to be able to uh, move forward that lane here uh, because uh, we, for we, we forbid uh, the characters to do U-turns uh, so you will not be able to go here and do a U-turn to reach that point uh, so you will have to go probably around uh, the whole block taking the shortest path to go there so if I want my first stop to be on that lane, I want to make sure that uh, it's positioned on that lane here and when my characters reach this, they're just gonna stop. So uh, let me set that behavior now to say that I want to use a uh, target pop tool. The pop tool I want to use is gonna be target shape one. And here we go. So now we'll have a traffic system probably, yeah, moving uh, accordingly. And now we can see that guy here uh, decided to change his way and to reach that target. And uh, if we inspect the behaviors, oops. Okay, um, you can see that behavior here is not running anymore. He's, he's actually reached the target and now he's going out of this. So it's just gonna stop. And whatever happens is just gonna make uh, a traffic jam. So all the characters which will move behind them will be blocked as well and uh, won't be able to go through. So let's say I want to make a kind of uh, bus or more well, taxi system, it's, it's actually a taxi. So let's say uh, that, char that character here uh, stops for maybe 10 frames. And after 10 frames, it's actually going to the next uh, target, which is going to be his next stop. So you can do, you know, a whole itinerary, maybe for bus or taxis, or if you want any hero character car you want to control specifically, uh, you can do the same. So I'm going to, you know, bring another go to behavior pretty uh, similar to what I've been doing so far. Say I want to use a target pop tool there and use that target too. And to mark the stop, to make sure that my stop is really obvious, I can use once again that block operator I've been playing with to uh, go around the error. And I can say, you know what, I want you to block uh, for uh, maybe 20 or 40 frames, between 20 and 30 frames. And um, now I'll have my characters figuring what's the closest position to go to that target. It's gonna stop for, um, 20 30 frames so here it's in the block and then it goes to the next target so it started again 
and now it's going to the next point and probably we'll just stop to the next point so you can uh, see what's the path is following to go there and now it's stopping and uh, I can probably you know make a loop here to ask the characters to loop again and again and again um, and here we go so it kind of took mm, uh, a bit longer than I expected but uh, yeah it's uh, 30 minutes so maybe let's uh, stop here and uh, let's see how the questions uh, maybe shape uh, that demo scene. So if you're having questions, that's a good time to ask. Uh, probably we'll get some time, depending on what's being asked, maybe we can edit that scene and add more and more behaviors. Uh, let's see how that goes. And uh, if you don't have any questions, feel free to let us know where you're from. So where are you listening that, uh, that uh, live session from? Is it late or early uh, where you live? Uh, let us know. So, okay, let me go through the uh, chat box. So what's the method for creating cars accelerating their speed when the light is orange? <laughs> um, that's that's a pretty good question, actually. It's, it's kind of silly, uh, but it's a good question. Um, to be honest, right now, there's no easy way to do that. You probably will have to you know explicitly do something like trigger some characters um based on distance well you can do something but that will be really really long to set up uh, maybe you can check what's the value of your lane um no uh, to be honest it's gonna be really a nightmare to do um but the good news is um right now the traffic system don't include perception so that means that um, my cars, uh, like the one I'm having right now, they, they don't perceive other things than the other cars. Uh, so they're just seeing the other cars, they're seeing actually those boxes I was referring to earlier. Uh, but uh, let's say there's a pedestrian which will cross here. My car can't react to um, uh, those car, uh, to those pedestrian, sorry. Uh, where the contrary, is actually feasible. So pedestrian, they have perception. So entity that are perception, they can perceive other entities such as cars. So you could actually have a one-way system. So if I was about to make pedestrian, I will only have a one-way system. So my car will not be aware about my pedestrian, but my pedestrian will be. So that will be my pedestrian, will, which will tackle all the challenges of making sure that they can cross uh, at that specific time. So it means that cars don't really perceive what's going on within the environment. Uh, so they don't really, they have a pass, they're following that pass and they're just respecting the rules, but they don't know what's the actual color of the next traffic light they're, they're within. Uh, that's actually within a really uh, early roadmap. It's to improve that system. A lot of people have been asking to have a more complex system to have interaction between uh, pedestrian and cars. Uh, so hopefully we'll have perception within uh, uh, cars. So that means my car will be able to perceive other characters. And if you are uh, attending the, the virus spread uh, session, you could remember that uh, we can use that perception. Um, you can filter, so you can say, okay, is there something in front of me? Yes, you could filter maybe uh, by the shape, by the color, by the type. So. Uh, probably we can add a filter to ask what's the color right now of your traffic light which is in front of you and uh, if it's orange you can you know change your speed influence the speed because part of the channel operators is to influence the character's attributes so speed is one of those uh, so probably you'll be able to set that but right now um, not really easy to do mostly that's something you have to do manually uh, for the characters you really need um, can I define, so that, sorry, that was a really long answer for uh, a really short question. Uh, can I define exclusive lanes for agent, maybe have a bike or a bus lane? Uh, yes, totally. And that's exactly why we had uh, that uh, traffic uh, environment system. So let's say you would like to make a bus uh, uh, network and uh, you want it to separate it from your car uh, network. You, you could just make a separate curve system and uh, just create a new traffic locator and connect that new traffic locator to that specific entities. With the limitation that if at some point your, your bus traffic uh, system crosses your car traffic systems, uh, once again, they won't know each other same, for the same reason that I just explained. They don't have perception. They only know what's within their own environment. So 
only the boxes which are within their environment. So as soon as we will have perception, uh, we'll also be able to tackle that. But in the meantime, we already have some customers doing something like this. So we are making uh, parallel networks which are only going to be used for bus lanes, for example. And just a quick word about um, uh, traffic uh, and how many contacts you can do. So anytime you make a new context, uh, it actually gets registered in the, uh, the, you know, the global node, which is called the crowd manager. If we take a look into the environment attributes, you figure that uh, there is all the environment I was just referring to in the, at the start of that session. So the terrain, the physics, the flock, uh, the close. We haven't spoke about that one, but it's kind of obsolete. Um, the perception uh, and the traffic locator. So it, it seems that you can only have one traffic locator being active. So um, it's true that by default, this is the one which is, which is going to be used. Uh, but actually, whenever you create, so um, um, maybe it will be a bit complex here, but whenever you create a new uh, population, let's say, here, um, let's, let's create a pop tool from scratch, for example. So let's create a pop tool here. Uh, here you can uh, create that into a new particle system. So you have a new particle system for the cars. You can use that guy to create another particle system for your cars. And you can also define that you want to use the crowd field. So the crowd field, just as a reminder, is the node which is able to take Maya particles and translate them as uh, characters. So um, just to make sure that not all the particles within the scene get created as a golem character. It's only the particle system which are connected to that guy which are going to be created as golem entities. So here you can define what's going to be the association into your pop tool. You can define what's going to be the association between your particle system. So you can use uh, either the crowd field, which has been created by default once again, or you can create a new one. So here I can, cre I can create a new one. And if I create a new crowd field, so I just done so, I created a new particle system here, a new crowd field. And you can see that crowd field reproduces the same environment uh, that we had within the manager. So it has the terrain, the physics, the flock. And by default, he says, uh, I want to use the manager traffic locator. So let's say you do a bus system and a bus network. You can create a separate entity type, a separate population tool, separate particle system, separate crowd field. And just assign, if you had multiple traffic systems within your scene, just assign a different traffic system than the one with it, which has been assigned to your car. So that's just a way to have multiple traffic system running at the same time in parallel, but with the limitation once again, as they will not perceive each other. So you may have some collisions between your bus and your cars if um, those are sharing the same network at some point. So um, the, the traffic system is quite, um, let's say early in our development. So we've been doing this um, kind of quickly to help some customers, but we're having more and more people uh, getting interested into this. Uh, so we're going to push more and more features. And obviously, uh, perceptions is, is one of the uh, the bigger ones uh, we're going to target first. Um, so let me check. Um, would it be possible to somehow sense if my car is turning left or right to later to later turn on or off a special turn signal on the car entity. Uh, yeah, true. And uh, I can see Alexander already answered uh, that one here. Uh, true. There's a that's something which is which is kind of casual. Um, so uh, we kind of uh, actually implemented uh, qu pretty easily and quickly. So a part of the different channels which are available. So let me uh, maybe create another expression uh, trigger so I can bring um, my channel list. Part of the channels uh, which are available for the characters, there's one which is actually, um, I think, turning. Let me check. Yeah, here we go. Uh, so let me maybe uh, use the traffic keyword instead to see what's uh, what's available in terms of, uh, of channels. So yeah, that's uh, stuff I can actually check. So I can check them within triggers. I can also check them within the chops. Uh, so channel operators uh, can be uh, reading that value here and use that to wait. Uh, some uh, uh, light system, maybe some attributes or some shading attribute, if you want to. Remember last week we were playing with uh, colors uh, for the uh, the virus spreading scene. I was changing colors based on you know uh, uh, um, avoidance with other characters. Uh, so you can do something similar. So here, feed some shading attribute based on what's going on within the um, 
within the simulation. So uh, you can see what's the distance to your traffic target. If you want, you know, as soon as you get close to something, you want to trigger some specific behavior. Is traffic turning right? So it means that at the next turn, um, my characters will turn right. So you can use that, that to drive some uh, turning lights. And we got something also to uh, drive the, um, the braking lights as well. So if your characters is braking and you can use the accumulator to probably accumulate the value on multiple frames. Uh, if it's braking, uh, you will have uh, that channel which will return one. And uh, you can use that, that as well to control some uh, braking light if you want to. Okay, so are there more questions? And nobody told me where they're from. So um, um, just a quick word if that's the first time you're watching this. Uh, we're from France, uh, so that explains that weird accent I'm having. Um, so yeah, feel free to, I can see some people from Vancouver, uh, which are actually attending uh, the live uh, on the regular, on the regular times. Uh, can I wait, wait the amount of cars that choose to go on a particular street uh, to maybe define less uh, used side streets? Ah, that's a good one. I, mm, how would I do that? Probably, well, you could like hack the system probably. Um, maybe you can specify, you know, more targets. Um, so, r We've been using the um, the random go to targets. Not that's not something you can really wait uh, into. Uh, if you really wanted to have control on that, what I would do probably is to put a um, um, a target on any line. I probably would script that here, right? Um, I probably make a, a publishing tool for every lane here, uh, which will act as a target on each side, uh, probably as well. And uh, just to hack the system, to have more chance to go through a road rather than the uh, another, I would put more uh, slots uh, within my population tool. But that's a hack, I have to admit here. So um, here, that's my target here. Um, by default, it just have zero slots, which means my position, uh, the character which will, well, the target which will be picked by the character is just the middle of uh, that guy here. So if I wanted to have 10 more chances uh, to get that road picked than other, I probably put some more slots in it, like 10 slots, so 10 sub positions. So that means that when I'm gonna pick a target, uh, I'll have more chance to um, end up into that uh, slot here. And uh, probably also if you if you're doing something like this, you end up with a big uh, instead of a F, you probably have a big random uh operator which will you know uh output on different traffic go to behaviors here with various uh positions so within the random you can also uh wait um what are the chances that one population tool gets picked rather than another uh but yeah that's totally an act here um if you if you really had to do it for prediction like right now that's the way i actually advise to do it uh but uh Probably that's something, once again, we could tackle with perception as soon as we had it. Or maybe we can add some preferences uh, on the road. Maybe, yeah, you know what? Actually, that's a better idea. Maybe we can add a weighting system on road. So by default, all roads get the same weight. Uh, but maybe we can add a factor, like a weight factor that we multiply the distance with uh, to artificially increase the distance and the path planning will um, avoid using that road. Uh, except if that's really the shortest path to go uh, where they need. Uh, you know what, I actually like that idea and uh, wouldn't take so long to implement, so I'm gonna write this down and uh, and uh, probably include that into a future release. So thanks for the suggestion. So people from LA, so it's still early, people from Kiev, hey there. Uh, it's probably almost the same time than in France, right? Um, if you're having more questions, that's the right time else we're gonna um, uh, wrap up uh, also just a quick reminder subscribe to the channel uh, next week um, on Thursday we're gonna have a session about flock and it's gonna be really fun because we're gonna make flying characters all the way uh, and perching on objects and uh, avoiding objects and following curves in 3d and uh, procedural animation for the wings um, so yeah really exciting and uh, next week we're going to start uh, a session uh, about battle simulation it's going to be next week and the week after it's going to be four courses specifically dedicated to uh, battle scenes so we're going to use that uh, fortress soldier we're having so medieval kind of soldier 
Uh, we're gonna have archery, uh, armies information, probably some physics, some charging armies. Uh, I'll do my best uh, within uh, 30 minutes, four times 30 minutes actually. So that's uh, probably gonna be uh, comfortable enough. Um, so thanks for uh, uh, all the questions and thanks for attending. Uh, you guys take care, stay safe, uh, obviously. And uh, see you on the first day. On Thursday. And in the meantime, grab the software uh, on the website. Download the software on the website for free. And um, maybe reproduce the scene I've been doing if you want to. So, yeah, take care and uh, see you later.